The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everyone. This is Teddy Kekstedt, and I'm filling in for Tommy O'Brien today. Welcome to the show on September 11th. Of course, we all know what anniversary this is. Um, I was somebody who was in the S&P 500 pit in Chicago at the time when the uh, when the planes hit the World Trade Center, so that we definitely on the floor were impacted by that when it happened right off the bat because people were on the phones and stuff like that. So definitely sympathies to the families and survivors from that event from that day. So anyhow, we have a very busy week to, uh, to talk about for the markets. We have uh, some interesting numbers coming out that should impact the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. We also have yields that are going to be probably in play. We have a Fed meeting that's approaching. We have a lot of economic data that's coming out on Thursday and Friday that we have to be aware of. And also we have the, B the Bank of Japan that uh, had some uh, information and talk that came out today that's very interesting. And we'll get into that later because it's definitely shaking up the U.S. dollar yen relationship. So um, outside of that, um, we do have, uh, once again, the numbers on Thursday, very critical. Um, economic numbers also for some of the other currencies like the British pound also are coming out that are going to be very impactful and also for the Australian dollar. So Wednesday night into Thursday, Friday morning, I think you're going to have a lot of in activity in both the dollar index and also the yields. So the Treasury bond market, the 10-year uh, market, I would also expect for them to have a lot of action. Um, and then obviously, once again, the S&Ps, I think especially is going to have a lot of swings. Now, is it going to be a trend um, move? Anything's possible, but I would definitely expect a lot of volatility, especially in your stock indexes come Thursday and Friday. So for you, those of you that are equity traders and options traders especially, um, I think you're going to have a lot of opportunities coming once you get through uh, um, after the economic releases on Thursday morning, especially once the stock market opens on Thursday morning as well as on Friday as well. I think for a Friday, you're going to have a lot of opportunity. Remember, we are coming into quarter end as well. So, I mean, we still have a few weeks away, but we do have option in a futures expiration also that's coming up in the next couple of weeks. So between that, all those different variables, I think you can expect to see a lot of volatility, um, especially and also a lot of opportunity as well. So and I think those are things that you want to take advantage of over the next uh, the definitely towards the end of the trading week today and tomorrow i think the expectations should be a little bit lower um, but once we hit wednesday especially and i think after tomorrow um once we have a little digestion of what happened with the bank of japan today as well i think that's going to have maybe start to see some trickle down into the markets on tuesday and getting ready for wednesday and thursday and friday's numbers so so those are the key things to uh take a look at and be mindful of as we start off our trading week. Um, so what else we need to look at? Key events also for uh, today, Oracle earnings are expected after the close today. Um, to start right now, I think you want to be, the expectations right now are pretty much set and probably are going to be um, spot on on that. And I wouldn't expect any major fluctuation either to the negative or the positive on that one. Um, let's see, Apple reveals its latest product launch um, as what, what, that um, according to Webbush this week. So that's going to be something that's going to be uh, probably impacting that stock. I know it's kind of funny, like I one of the stocks that, I mean, people always ask me about equities in different markets, but when they ask about stocks, it's usually very random about there's so many equities out there. Um, but lately, I've been asked about Apple by so many people, so um, which is very odd. So it has, once again, it's also in the, uh, the news today for something to be aware of. Um, another stock to watch would be um, Tesla also on the move potentially this week. Um, and then also um, a couple other sleepers would be uh, stock NGA and also BWA. So those are also things to look at. Um, let's see what else we have. Um, and then also one thing to pay attention to is we do have 
a uh, small U.S. Treasury auction today. It's only a three-year notes, um, but right now the short end of the curve is driving the yields. So I think that's something that maybe we should pay attention to this afternoon. It may actually cause a little spike in the interest rate market that might give the S&Ps a little bit of a jitter too. So that would be at 1 p.m. Eastern time as well. So pay attention to that. So right after lunch, if it's quiet, look for that little spike of activity coming in at that moment. Uh, and then let's see, what else do we have? Um, some other things for, uh, for consumer stocks um, to take a look at. Uh, Instacart, uh, C-A-R-T, that's one I would take a look at. You might see some volatility in that one. As far as directional plays, I don't want to put, put any stance on that one, but I think you could play have some good volatility option plays, um, especially if you're trading on the next uh, uh, 20, uh, 25 to 45 days for expiration. Uh, let's see what else um, for energy, industrials, and materials. I would take a look at Air, AAR Corp, which is AIR, and also Astra Space, ASTR. Um, those are um, some things that are kind of on the, on the radar coming up that I would take a look at. And then also for healthcare, I would look at uh, Sigma Group, that's CI, and also AstraZeneca, AZN, as far as where you may have a little bit of option volatility. Those are, I'm going to, I think Kevin Hinks might be coming up at the, uh, in the second segment this morning. So if he is, those are, maybe I'll have some questions for him, or he may have something to say about uh, those uh, equities. Let me see if there's any questions on the Discord here. I'm sorry, folks. I'm trying to fill in for Tommy and watch all these things. Um, okay, so let's see. We don't have any questions in the chat. Last week I was watching them and they are doing the show and I wasn't watching the chat enough. So, okay, not to delay on that one. All right, so anyhow, um, we should have a chart up here that you can see. And as we for the break, I want you to see how the – U.S. dollar, Japanese yen started out today. It gapped uh, with a lower open. Obviously, right now it's a red uh, candlestick. That means it's a negative on the day. It's off its lows. It's right in the middle of its range. And uh, maybe Kevin Hanks, when he comes on, too, he might have something to say about um, the BOJ and how that might be impacting us come uh uh, the next couple of weeks of trading, and especially as we head into our own Fed meeting as well. So, um, and you can see that there's a reaction um, as far as this currency pair where the US dollar yen is trading negative because right now, according to what uh, their uh, chairman, or equivalent chairman said, was that the, uh, the, the dovish uh, outlook for the BOJ is now um, becoming an option to take off the table. So does that mean they're going to get aggressive? Not by any means. Uh, but when, when you look at what they've done, uh, especially since this new uh, leadership has done, come into the BOJ, remember there was a, t a turnover of leadership in April into May for the Bank of Japan. And since then, there was a couple of moves. In fact, you can see on the chart that uh, – we had the little rally here in, in May. This was a little jittery here. This first little speed bump was when <clears throat> the, the, the new chairman started speaking. And since then, you can see, obviously, the trend has been strong, but that's because we've had rate hikes from the, our own Fed. So that fundamental has been in place. Now, the fact that they might become hawkish, and that's very possible. We'll talk about that after the break. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movements you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Hello, this is Teddy Kex again, filling in for Tommy O'Brien, and I believe we have Kevin Hinks on the line. Are you there, Kevin? Or is he not calling in today? I even thought he was supposed to be online for this segment. Okay, I guess Kevin Hinks is not on the, on the line. Okay, so uh, we have the uh, crude oil futures uh, chart up. You can see that we made new highs last week. Everybody knows what crude's doing because they, they when they go to the gas pump, they can see where prices are. Uh, I've been actually in multiple states over the past uh, few days, and uh, it's nice to see that uh, gas prices are lower than they are in Illinois. It's because we have higher taxes, but outside of that, they're high everywhere. So uh, it's definitely been uh, more expensive at the pump than it has been all summer. And uh, now we're heading into the, the winter months. Yay. So uh, anyhow, uh, we have uh, the market hitting some pretty strong resistance. And I think that right now it's pretty mixed uh, this morning that you might expect to see a little bit of a profit taking slide in oil. Am I looking for the market to turn? Absolutely not. But just as, I mean, we had originally earlier, um, a couple of weeks ago, a price target around the 84 area with the 87 year, right, pretty much where it's at right now is our extended price objective. Does that mean it's not going to trend higher? I think there's the bull right now is the trend, so you have to be mi definitely mindful of that. But right now, it's not unlikely to have a correction and a slight little pullback, especially if we start to see a little bounce in yields and we have some other... Uh, um, economic data that's going to come out. So we'll see how that comes out, especially on Thursday and Friday. There's some things that can be start to become restrictive for demand for oil. If that is, becomes the case, then we can see a nice little correction. Now, as far as how far of a correction, I would say off the last swing low to the current high that we could easily come back to this area of around, let's say right around the 50% area right here of around 82. Is that a big big move? Not really. Um, if we were to have, say, some sort of big 
uh, economic data for the, when, like it's, to say that we're going to have a potential slowdown, like where transportation stocks start to wane, and uh, and also factory orders and production orders and consumer if consumer demands and things like that start to wane, especially as we're heading into the end of the third quarter, beginning of the fourth quarter, um, that could impact the price of oil. So as far as then, I would say we could probably come back towards this last swing, major swing low. But as far as do we have any major slide coming up for oil? I doubt it. I think really that what you're going to have here is a, a floor in the upper 70 area. So I would expect that gas prices and oil prices will remain pretty much where they're at through the winter season for the next three to six months or higher. Uh, to, if, if we were to have anything lower than that, say below the 77 area, then I would say Christmas is coming early and I don't think that's going to be the case. Um, not that it couldn't happen, but because considering all the deals that are going on now with the Middle East, as well as the devaluation of the dollar in international trade, um, it's it, especially in oil, that's that's becoming a very big factor. And that's going to impact the price of oil, especially domestically, as we head into the end of the fourth quarter and into the first quarter of next year. These are things that nobody's factoring into as far as long term uh, price projections for oil, and I think it's really something you need to start to focus on because the, the, the currency differential to begin with is going to start to put a big spin on the price of oil, and it's not going to have anything to do with dollar strength. It's going to have to do, do predominantly with other currency strength, and as that new mechanism starts to be, you know, damage the petrol dollar, people need to be aware of that. So the only thing that I think that could really combat that would be if we actually increase supply um, through further drilling and increased production, uh, which is definitely not on the table for at least um, the next uh, couple of years. And obviously, if we don't have a change in leadership in Washington, it's going to be locked on the table for at least the next uh, five years, in which case, that means I would expect to see probably we'll see 100 plus dollar oil will be the regular norm where the floor is now where we wishing that we were trading at where it is right now. And that's something you want to look at um, as far as uh, transportation stocks as you move forward, especially into the third and fourth quarters. Remember, you have um, besides the market mechanism going on with the valuations of these companies, it's their production and uh, uh, their ability to uh, produce um, their, their, ability, their services as far as the trucking and moving things around the country. Now, if we have sales that start to wane, especially moving into Christmas time in third quarter, if we don't have good results from like the, like the school sales and things like that for fall, then I would be very mindful that we're probably going to see that reflection come Christmas time and with the inflation and commodities. And that's something I talked about with Tommy a couple of weeks ago is you have to watch the CRB index because if we see inflation in commodities over the next few months, which probably with food you won't so much. If anything, there might be some deflation because especially with corn being such a bumper crop this year and so much such a high yield so early, that may pad some of the food end of the CRB, but something like oil, heating oil, um, especially that's going to become a very big issue, especially think about if we have a, a harsh winter or just a cold winter in the Northeast, especially, or in just, or even in the Northwest where people rely on heating oil, especially, uh, the price of heating oil is going to be, it can easily double, um, in a very, very short amount of time. If that is the case, that's going to impact obviously demand in the consumer sector. You're going to see people really tightening up their purse strings, especially come when it comes time for, you know, what are you going to buy for Christmas? You know, this might be the year, you know, not to, to make a joke of an old movie line, but Johnny might, little Johnny might not be getting the GI Joe with the Kung Fu grip this year, because let's be fa let's face it, you know, inflation has not gone away. So we're watching the numbers to see what kind of uh, things happen with that over the next few months. And I think once again, like I started the show out with, uh, you have to pay attention to Thursday's and Friday's numbers because if they're remotely inflationary, that is starting to bend the curve back up in a direction that the consensus said we were we were pulling back from. You know, we the last couple of months, people have said, oh, inflation's not so bad. It's not running at the rate that it had been. Well, that may be possible, be may be true, but it doesn't mean that inflation didn't ex didn't cease to exist. So, and now if we have an uptick in inflation, what does that mean? That means it's going to be really hard for the Fed to not remain at least hawkish 
you know, in their outlook for the next three to four or five months. Because if we start to see a reversal of what everyone said for the last two months was happening, meaning that we're actually now going backwards, well, then the Fed is not going to become neutral, let alone dovish. That means hawkish will be on the table, and we will probably see, besides um, one quarter point, I think we still have every bit of three quarters or, or a full point between now and the first uh, quarter of next year. That was not on the table. People have been saying that's the wrong kind of thing. It's not going to happen. Anything can happen, and especially with the numbers, the way they're looking right now, I think you have to really – Think in those terms. Why would the Fed back off? Especially think about this, the BOJ, if they start to become hawkish, they haven't been hawkish, they haven't been anything in decades. The fact that they're just coming off of the dovish uh, uh, perspective is something that's huge for them. That's going to impact the yen's relationship with other currencies. Does that mean it's going to completely alter the dollar's uh, uh, strength and the trend right now? Absolutely not. But I think you're going to start to see much more of uh, – a swinging activity, meaning that where we've been we've been in a zone for the past couple of months for a lot of markets where even if they're trending, they're very choppy and tight. They're grinding either up or down. So, and here's the break. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Hello, everyone. This is Teddy Kekstad. I'm filling in for Tommy O'Brien today, and I think we start finally have some kind of communication lines going properly. So uh, one of the stocks I mentioned before was AA, or AIR, which is uh, the AAR Corp. As you can see, this market, it's on its low. Um, I hope you guys can hear me okay because I'm getting a lot of feedback now. So uh, anyhow, uh, the, the market is making new lows, as you can see. So for any of you options traders out there, it looks like we have some opportunities with some volatility. There was a lot of support, as we can see, in this area where it's trading around this 57.81 area. So let's just see on a FIB level where we're at. Okay, so this is a good support area. This 0.382 is usually when the trend is solid. This is usually where you hold before you bounce back up to when you have a, another strong leg higher. So trading below this area here is pretty negative. What I would say right now what would be a good play would be, if you look at down here, 0.618, if this is, I mean, this is obviously in a bull trend. If this market was to remain in a neutral to higher area, then this would be in the range, excuse me, 55 to 58 here where it should find a bottom. Obviously, right here, this is a key swing low. I would expect that if it takes out this little lower area of the 57 quarter area, let's see what's the low, 57.30, excuse me, um, then you probably have a good chance of breaking down towards this 56 to 55 handle uh, area for the stock. Once it gets in this area, if it's obviously neutral to a bull, still we'll probably find a base here. So what kind of trade would you put on here? As far as buying the stock, I would say wait and look to buy lower, um, put some orders in probably um, somewhere in the 56 to 55, 50 area. As far as if you um, were holding the stock, taking profit is probably now, or you should have, this would have been the area to have had a little protective stop in case uh, the market was pulling back. For options trade, though, I think you have a good straddle or strangle area right here. Uh, that just looking at this move here, I, or where, the way it's making this low and the way it has in the past, it doesn't seem to hang on this area for too long. If that's the case, and we come down to the 55 area, let's say you do the 5781. I can even try and pull that up real quick. Uh, let's see if I pull in trading. Let me see what kind of option pricing we get here. Let's see if I can pull this up real live. Okay, here we go. We have AIR, and let's see, add an option, add an option. Okay, so we're gonna do a buy to open. I'm trying to get you some quotes here. So right now for the straddle, if you do, let's say the October expiration, which would probably be a good time because Remember, we're coming into the end of third quarter, so if you have window dressing, a lot of profit taking or even adding on to positions happens right around that, that, that time window which we're coming into. So I would expect a lot of volatility or opportunity to get in or out of the spread. So the market's at 57, so let's see if there's a, there's a 55. There we go, 55, ooh, 55 or a 60. Um, we want the, I guess we would go with the 60. Yeah, let's go with the 60 strike price. Or we can even do the 60. Yeah, that's 60. 55. There we go. The 60, 55 call and the 55 put. Okay, so for an October expiration where you put the $60 call and the $55 put. So instead of a straddle or a strangle, or straddle rather, do a strangle. So we have the higher option would be the call. The lower one is the put. Since it's in a bull market right now, the pricing, you can get this off at, it would cost $645 right now because it's $6.45. So to put on this at this level right here, so we'll mark, here's where the market's at. We'll mark this at yellow. And then we're going to put, we have the 60. So let's do it real quick like this. It's a little off, but you guys get the idea. So here's our bandwidth right here. All right, so we know that odds are, if the market breaks down to where the put strike price is, the put would go up in value, the call would go down in value. There's a chance for it to get down there. Once it gets to that area, would it bounce? Very likely, so you could get out of that, uh, that option. Okay, so let's see, why is that, sorry. 
Sorry about that little feedback, folks. Um, all right. So now we have, once again, if the market breaks down to the 55 area between now and expiration, you would have the ability to probably break even on that at least. If it goes the other way and it remains a bull, especially if it gets back above 60, well, now you're looking at where you can make some, uh, some really good money because of the fact that right now you're spending more for the call than the put to begin with. So if the bull comes up, the put, you're not going to lose very much on the put and you're going to gain that much quicker. So we have all you have to do is move. We know by expiration you have to be six dollars, six and a half dollars away. So that means you have to either be at let's see, six and a half, so you'd be at fifty-one thirty, or you'd be at um, sixty-three, sixty-seven twenty, uh, or excuse me, <clears throat> sixty-three twenty. So sixty-three twenty puts you below this high. But if we take out this high here, if we get the rally. Look at what happens. If we breach this up, this downward sloping trend line, keeping the correction intact, that would be a very bullish indication that this market's going to break out. So if you trade the October or even if you go out even a further out one more month on this, I think that this would be a good uh, strangle play, not straddle play. Um, you could do the straddle. In fact, I can give you the pricing on that one real quick. That's not a hard thing to do. All right, there we go. So that would be 830. So for the pricing on this one, especially considering you're doing your it's your the market the trend is your friend, and you're taking pretty much a volatility um, play with, with a with directional bias because you know that right now if the if the bull remains and the trend remains intact that the market's most likely is going to go higher it's going to be neutral to higher in which case you would rather have the cheaper put that you could have so you're more you get more bang for your buck especially if you're right. On this one, um, if you're wrong, uh, that you, you're going to need to have a, definitely a bigger slide. That's where you come into an issue where if this correction just goes towards that 55 area and you do a regular straddle, that could be a case where you're going to have to get out at watch that trade because once it gets to that area, you may have to scratch that trade right away because if it hangs there, you're going to end up losing a little bit of money. You would still recoup money. You would not lose everything because your put would be have a, a decent value, especially if once you get below 55. So in that case, that trade would be um, the way to look at that one. Uh, let's see. Um, what was the other one I had for you? We had... Let's see what was the other one we put on the, the watch. We had AIR um, and then we had Astra. Let's try with this, take a look at this one. So we're giving you guys a little freestyle. Oh, here we go. Now here's one that's interesting. This one is beat up. Okay, so let's see what's going on. Um, mixed security shelf files, 100 million. Mega. Okay. All right, so they did some financing, it looks like, but that may cause a nice little spike. And trading here. So let me pull up that train, that little option train, ASTR. Okay, you got a break right now. We'll see you in a minute. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs.
An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hello, everyone. This is Teddy Kekstead filling in for Tommy O'Brien, and uh, we were just talking about it, stock trade. And since I'm on the show for a whole hour, I'm going to do my normal segment when I come and visit him on Wednesdays, and I'll see you guys next Wednesday, or this upcoming Wednesday. So I have the dollar index chart up, and as you can see, it ended the week kind of just hanging below its highs. It's starting to run out of a little bit of steam. A corrective rally is definitely something that would be a, a nice normal thing to see, a little profit-taking slide. We have some, like I said, interesting uh, things going on with the Bank of Japan. Uh, the yen we already spoke about, so now we're going to switch over to something else. We're going to go to the Euro-US dollar. Now, the Euro-US dollar has been slamming lows for, obviously, quite some time. It's been getting really hammered. Uh, we have a sell signal that was in place. It was triggered back here a week and a half ago. Um, we're very close to our target. We had adjusted our stop now already down to um, a uh, – we have a break-even plus uh, – a few pips profit, and we're going to be lowering it again uh, later this week as it hangs on these lows. And if it pulls back and corrects to it, well, it's a profitable trade. If not, we're looking for an area around 106.39 still to get down to. Um, even with uh, the Bank of Japan making their thing going on, we know the Fed's coming up. Considering we have the economic numbers uh, this week for the euro, we do have some coming out. Uh, what is it tomorrow? and also on Thursday, and then obviously we have our numbers that are coming out, the heavy ones on Wednesday and, or Thursday and Friday. So these are all things that could impact the Euro US dollar. Odds are it's gonna keep our Fed leaning towards a hawkish stance. ECB is gonna force their hands to pull the trigger. Probably they're going to have to do something, but what can they really do? They're out of bullets and it's they're, they're really uh, backed up against the wall. So I would expect to uh, be right now remain in the sell rally forecast for this euro us dollar currency another currency that's getting beat up is the british pound us dollar however today obviously you can see that it's getting a nice lift that's probably why the, the us dollar index right now is only slightly uh, uh, lower on the day the index that is um, because you have the euro which is only slightly you know indifferent on the day but the pound here is starting to show a rally and then you have the us dollar yen so those three currencies right there um are having nice little bounces against the doc dollar um, but as you can see it's not really impacting the dollar index too much because those are the ones that are really in play also those um the, the british pound and the euro those are the ones that have the most amount of numbers to pay attention to this week just like the us dollar so those three currencies right there 
are going to have, I would expect to see the most volatility and the most potential for daily range as well. So something like the pound, you can see how um, just like how all the markets gapped low, uh, stronger against the dollar today. You can see how the pound did the same thing. Now it did come all the way back to where it closed on Friday, but as you can see, strength is there and now it's all the way back by its highs. So I would expect this momentum to carry through into tomorrow's trade. Right now, this is a, this is a counter trend move, so you can only view it as a correction, no matter what. Like I would be very cautious trying to say that the dollar is peaking and it's making its high, unless we see the Fed really change its stance. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, let's see, we have a question, Michael Niagara Falls. Um, we have a caller. All right, guys, put the caller on. I see you on the chat. Good morning. Good morning. Morning. Uh, uh, I wanted to continue the saga of the polar Zwoty vis-a-vis the U.S. dollar. Sure. It's uh, depreciated again since we last spoke. And uh, I just wondered, do you have any upside targets for, for the polar Zwoty? Okay, that I can uh, let's figure this put out on a monthly here for you. Okay, so definitely remember when we spoke last week, because it was the end of August, we had this buy signal right here. So right off the bat, on a monthly basis, let's see, you have last month right here. This triggered here a bullish engulfing line. So just on that trade, uh -huh. on that signal alone, and especially because we're talking about a monthly basis here, I would say that this initial area here, the 0.382, around $4.37 area, it's probably gonna be your first area of resistance. You can see that when the market had ran up the first time and pulled back, this was a, a support area. Usually where support becomes resistance and vice versa. So I would expect that this will be the area that's going to have maybe a little profit taking and make it a little choppy. But remember, uh -huh. we're talking about a monthly basis. So as far as how high can it go, if this is yeah. only a corrective move, okay, meaning that uh, this is actually in a bear market. So now, if you look at this currency, the U.S. dollar um, PLN here has been in overall. It's in a bull market. You know, you can, you're coming off a major swing, higher swing high. This low that it made in July is a higher swing low. So as long as this remains in place here, the overall trend, no matter what, is bullish, okay? So okay. now as far as the volatility, last week we had the three-quarter point rate hike, I believe is what they had that day. That is a catalyst no, they for sure. It. They, they, he lowered it, the, the Polish central banker. I mean, banker, correct, um, lowered it. I'm sorry, it, lowered it, correct. It's all political. Um, they're losing the polls or something. There's an election October 14th or October 15th. Uh, for the European Senate or something, and uh, uh, mm -hmm. they're worried or whatever, so he dropped the rate. And mm -hmm. so now we got what call a, what do you call a bear rate on the Polish Zwoty. So that's why mm -hmm. I'm calling you up because I would like to know how high could this Zwoty go vis a vis the US dollar? Okay, well, that's especially since you're doing it, there's a counter trade there with the interest rates. Since they correct, they pulled back, okay, meaning they cut yeah. rates three quarter of a point especially since our, we're looking for our Fed to at least do a quarter point in the next meeting or so, that alone should help to drive this market all the way back up to its highs, okay? Because no. fundamentally speaking- The if, if, to US dollar? Absolutely, it could do that. Because if we go up, if you don't, if they remain on just a flat to even remotely another rate cut, okay? You realize that that's a huge differential in interest rates between your, that, the, the Polish Central Bank and the, and the Federal Reserve for the United States. And especially if we do a quarter point with an expectation of another quarter point or more, I, I would say absolutely you could see those highs. I mean, this is on a monthly basis. Let's go back to the weekly basis here. Okay, so if you look at, where was it in October? Okay, so this was, this high right here, was in the market yeah. that was October of last year that was when our yields they were on their highs right now our yields are still lower than they were last October we've had multiple rate hikes since then and the reason that the market pulled back was because the consensus was that the Fed was going to stop by now they haven't stopped by now and there's the, there's no end in sight right now if we have in inflationary numbers in the United States for instance Let's say that we have um, inflationary numbers on Thursday and Friday, okay? And especially if yeah. unemployment claims go down, meaning um, yeah. going against what the Fed wants, yeah, I would see you can easily go back to the October highs of last year. 
Is it going to happen in the next week or two? No. I mean, look at how long it took no. this to break down here. But long term, that's where I see it going for sure. Okay. How, how about geopolitical? Let's say um, uh, Putin's, Putin's, Putin's moving those uh, nuclear weapons to Belarus, okay? Mm -hmm. And Lukashenko, the last great dictator of Europe, uh, he's made some threats, you know, and he starts doing some saber rattling. And then you got uh, the Wagner group, uh, say, doing some border skirmishes with Poland. How, how, you think this thing can get back to five, say, by end of October? I would say by sometime in November. Yeah, absolutely. End of October might be a little bit of a reach. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hello, everyone. This is Teddy Kexta filling in for Tommy O'Brien for the last segment of today's show. I think we may have another caller. Is that right, guys? Do we have a caller? Hello. Yes. Yes. Bill from Atlanta? Yes. Um, How are you? Jay, I got a question on candlesticks. Do you use or prefer to use just totally closed candles versus open candles? Uh, when it comes to Japanese candlesticks, I always use patterns. In fact, right now on the screen, I have a sell signal from the U.S. dollar Canada that was triggered on Friday, a dark cloud cover. 
um, which has the market looking to probably take out the last swing low over the next week or so. Um, the, the Tiger Forex support, these are things that I cover. Um, I don't typically look at single bars and, and themselves, except for something like a dark cloud cover or um, a piercing line or either a bullish or uh, bearish engulfing line. Otherwise, they're multi-candle uh, multi patterns that I use. And also, I only use them, for instance, in a situation where they're trending into those uh, candles as well. I highlight that in uh, my book, High Probable Japanese Candlestick Patterns. Um, we just recently did a webinar for stock and option trades on how to use them like that. Yeah. Uh, so, I, yeah. I, I'm talking about the, the construction of an individual candle. For example, mm -hmm. if a market opens up uh, sharply higher with a gap, and then the, by the close, the close is lower than the open. In one method, that is a, a red bar because the close is below the open. In Correct. another method, it's an open candle or it's a closed uh, hard, hard green candle, but it's still a green candle because the close is higher than the previous day's close. And therefore, the volume on that day would be added to positive volume as opposed to uh, so there's two different methods in the creation of an individual candle, and I'm wondering which one you prefer. Well, the one the, the one you're talking about, I've never seen or used that. That doesn't make sense because if the market gaps, like you can see on the candle here, it gap lower even if it ends up positive. If it's below um, the previous day, it, every bar stands on itself from its close and it's open. It doesn't have anything to do with the previous day as far as the color. So um, I would do the, the, the conventional way, which means that if it opens above the close, it's positive. Uh, well, okay. Well, uh, that's, that's so. interesting because then that means all your candles are solid colors, and, and I prefer the open ones as a possibility. Anyway, you're, you're looking at that's, the, that's changing the view of what they mean. Those, they're, 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 they're shaped in a certain way, so you have that expectation of what really transpired. You're, you're, you're breaking it down for a different view. I'm not saying that it doesn't work. That's just not how I would be able to use your patterns, though. They would, the candles aren't formed in the same method. Right. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Yeah, Appreciate you're welcome. It. No, good question. It's a very good question. So, um, and uh, yeah, that was that was uh, very interesting. I haven't heard that one before. Um, but everyone has, you know, whatever works is right. What's right works for you is all that matters, you know. So, but I wouldn't be able to use my conventional patterns if but if the, the candles were formed in that way, which gets back to data. You, you know, you get what you pay for. If you have bad data, um, you're going to have bad trades. So you got to make sure you're using a good trading platform and have. Um, decent data feed as well. So, and yeah, once again, we have a sell signal in the US dollar Canada um, that we should probably get the market down to maybe test these lows here. Overall, for a correction, we could probably get down to this 133 area, 30, 33 half area. That's if we have a longer term weekly and monthly correction. But on a daily basis, I think we could still sell off into next week and especially with the way the numbers are going, um, if uh, that we could go probably over the next two sessions and come near the support area by the swing low. So we'll see what happens with that trade. Um, we've had an interesting show. Uh, once again, it's September 11th. Um, uh, please have some reflections at some point and remember those that uh, perished in that uh, just that catastrophe and as well as all the people you know that in New York that um, for everything they were, that they had to go through from the cleanup and the destruction and everything. So um, it did happen. Don't forget that it happened. Remember that uh, we should all be very grateful and thankful for what we have.